For thousands of years, India has had more religious diversity than anywhere on earth. Its billion inhabitants include Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Jains, Buddhists, animists, and atheists. Those who know Jesus are a tiny minority. Until recently, almost no Christians could be found in most of North India. Missionary efforts were largely unsuccessful in the northern regions, including Punjab, the birthplace of Sikhism. Like Muslims, Sikhs believe there is only one God and that salvation comes from good works. Like Hindus, Sikhs believe in reincarnation, but view it as a curse that can only be broken by proper worship and obedience. Their sacred scriptures are worshipped almost as a god. Squeezed between Muslim Pakistan and Hindu India, Sikhs are militantly proud of their unique faith and culture. They have always been resistant to outsiders. Demanding independence from India, Sikh separatists led a violent civil war that went on for years, ending with a massacre at the hands of the Indian Army in 1984. Thousands died in the conflict. Ultimately, that event led to the assassination of India's Prime Minister, Indira Gandhi. Into this dangerous environment of proud resistance to the gospel came Sanji Paul, a young man with a passion for Christ. Sanji felt called to this area because it was the most neglected, crime-ridden and rebellious region in Punjab. Sanji is receiving church planner training from Mission India. As a part of his coursework, he began visiting a number of rural villages. He called on poor agricultural workers who labor in rice paddies and mustard fields. None of them knew the name of Jesus Christ. Sanji's dream was to change that. His evangelistic method is to befriend the villagers and offer to pray for their personal needs. Like Muslims and Hindus, Sikhs are also people of prayer and see no harm in allowing a Christian to pray for them. It was in the little village of Kalapur, tucked amidst the mustard fields, that Sanji discovered the Holy Spirit had gone ahead of him. That is where he met Kavita. We are poor people. Our homes are made of mud, and we run our families through what we earn day to day. When Sanji came to us, we had many difficulties, problems and sickness were prevailing. Kavita is a small, unimposing old woman who was suffering from kidney stones. Sanji offered to pray for her. He knelt down, placed his hand on her, and prayed to Jesus for healing. I traveled to see a doctor, and he demanded 10,000 rupees for an operation. I said to the doctor, I am poor and unable to pay 10,000 rupees. Sanji did not know how God would use his prayer. When he rode a small motorbike into the village for his next visit, a jubilant Kavita came to greet him. The Lord has healed me, she told him. Jesus has taken away my pain. After this brother came into our home and prayed, everything became all right. God healed me. Kavita introduced Sanji to her husband, her children, and her neighbors. Soon Sanji was reading the Bible to a small group teaching them to pray and explaining the good news of salvation as God's free gift to the Punjabi people. Sanji shared the message of repentance and the Bible with us. Gradually, we came to know each other better. Then I asked Sanji to start a prayer meeting at our home, and he continuously comes for meetings there. Now we have repented and we're walking with the Lord. Sanji was a young Christian stranger in a hostile environment. How could he overcome generations of proud tradition and resistance to every missionary effort? 
the mustard fields surrounding Kalapur tell the story. Each sprawling field of yellow started from a handful of very small seeds. The Bible tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes like a tree, so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. For a mustard farmer, watching a tiny seed grow into a tree-like plant is an ordinary, annual miracle. Likewise, small, insignificant, ordinary Kavita influenced the people around her in an extraordinary way. Within four months, 15 of the 55 families in Kalapur had become believers. They now worship every Sunday in front of Kavita's house, a public testimony to everyone. Their music reflects their newfound faith. In one of their favorite Punjabi hymns, the villagers sing, It's time to take up our cross and follow Jesus. All of my children follow Jesus now. We are thankful for Pastor Sanji, who came to pray with us and tell us about Christ. It is my prayer that my whole family will be in the Lord and I believe that one day they will all follow Christ. For Christians, India has been the land of small beginnings. Something big is happening in Kalapur and God is using small, seemingly insignificant people to do it. Like a farmer sowing mustard seeds, Sanji and Kavita have watched the gospel sprout and grow, changing lives and transforming families. The kingdom of God is no longer insignificant in Kalapur. Everyone is affected by what is happening. The gospel is transforming the village, and in time it will transform the next village and the next. Sanji Paul and his fellow Christians in India see all of these ordinary miracles as a part of a larger, extraordinary movement to Christ. They believe that, in time, the birds of the air will nest in the branches of God's kingdom. These birds will represent people God has called out of every ethnic group, religion, language, and place, including a tiny, once forgotten village called Kalapur.